Hello my dear friends today i am going to start a lecture on the veterinary anatomy which will be our introductory part so today i will discuss about the definition of veterinary anatomy anatomy branches of anatomy and some directional terms on anatomy so here we go first of all i will discuss about the definition of anatomy here it goes here the word anatomy strictly means of cutting open or dissociation of the parts of the body it is the branch of biological science which deals with the form and structure of the body and its parts now we will move towards the definition of veterinary anatomy here it is it it, it is also the branch of biological science which deals with the form and structure of the principal domesticated animals now i would like to move towards the branches of anatomy here there are five branches of anatomy first one is gross anatomy second one is microscopic anatomy or histology or and third one is your um, applied anatomy fourth one is uh, um, radiological anatomy and the fifth one is developmental anatomy or embryology here we go with the gross anatomy at first first one is gross anatomy here the worst word gross comes from the latin word that is gross which means thick here in this type of anatomy we will study about the various forms and structures of the animal's body with the help of our naked eye and also with the help of some instruments um, instrument your forceps and scalpels we will use forceps and scalpels and this gross anatomy is divided into two parts first one is topographical anatomy this topographical anatomy is also known as regional anatomy or the surface anatomy here in this type of anatomy we will study about the different regions of the body like our anatomy of the head anatomy of the tail anatomy of the forelimb anatomy of the hind limb this all lies inside the topographical anatomy now the systematic anatomy in this type of anatomy we will deal about deal with the different we will deal with the different systems in the animal's body for example osteology here we will study about the bones and this systemic anatomy is divided into seven parts first one is osteology arthrology myology splanchnology angiology your neurology and the and the last one is esthesiology first one is our osteology first one is our osteology here we will study about the bones in the arthrology portion we will study about the joints in the myology portion we will study about the muscles and that muscles are skeletal muscle smooth muscle and cardiac muscle in the angiology we will study about the uh, heart and the blood vessels in the splanchnology we will study about the um, different visceral organs of the animal's body like kidney liver etc in the neurology we will study about the nervous system and in the nervous system we will also study about the central nervous system peripheral nervous system and the autonomic nervous system in the esthesiology we will study about the uh, different uh, sense organs in the animal's body like eyes ears nose tongue and skin now i would like to talk about the microscopic anatomy this microscopic anatomy is also known as histology here the word histo means tissue and logos means the study so histology is the study of tissues by using the electron microscope now i would like to talk about the developmental anatomy or the embryology here in the embryology we will study about the development of embryos and fetuses that how these embryos and fetuses are developed number 4 is our applied anatomy in this we will study about the application of anatomical knowledge to treat the to treat and diagnose the 
disease of animals and at last i would like to discuss about the radiological anatomy here we will study the different structures of the body of animals by using the ct scan that is computed tomography scan or ultrasound or by using the x rays here for example the liver of ox liver of um, liver of sheep liver of goat etc now i would like to move towards some directional terms first term is dorsal or superior okay so here the structures which are away from the ground are considered as dorsal second one is ventral or inferior the structures which are toward the ground is ventral the structures which are toward the ground is ventral so here we can take an example over here here i have the photo or picture of the dog with different anatomical terminologies first of all dorsal and ventral here we go this one is dorsal and this one is ventral see in the dorsal portion there lies a vertebra and in the ventral portion there lies the sternum so this vertebra is dorsal to the sternum and this is sternum ventral to the vertebra moving forward number three it is cranial or anterior or cephalic here in the cranial or anterior or cephalic the structures which are present towards the head region or the front side is known as cranial or anterior or cephalic here we can see this is our cranial portion this is our cranial portion this is our cranial portion and the structures which are present towards the tail is known as caudal this is towards here whatever the structures are present they are toward the tail and they are caudal and here the structures which are present towards the head towards the head are cranial now moving forward again we will move towards the rostral here the structures which are present towards the muzzle here we can see the rostral this one the structures which are present towards the muzzle is called rostral and another one is median okay if we measure the skeleton of ox or any animal from the longitudinal direction from this longitudinal direction here we can see here a imaginary line red imaginary line over here this this is medial line this is our medial line this is our medial line we can also take an example the structures which are present inside the in the inside portion of the ribs are considered to be medial and in the lateral we can take the surface of the ribs we can take example as the surface of the ribs are present away from the medial which are considered to be lateral so here we can go again this is our lateral the structures which are away from the mid axis are considered as lateral for example the external side of ribs are away from the median which is lateral now if we move toward the forelimb if we move towards the forelimb then here in the forelimb we will find two directional terms first one is proximal second one is distal the structures which lie towards the junction of the body is called proximal and the structures which lie away from the junction of the body are distal here we can see 
this one is proximal see in this part like here the this one here in this area in the forelimb we can see the structures which are moving towards or which are uh, which lies towards the body which are lying towards the body is proximal and the structures which are lying away from the junction of the body are known as to be distal so another one is here now if we move towards the carpal joint or knee joint in the forelimb we will find that the anterior surface is considered to be dorsal surface whereas the posterior surface is considered to be volar surface or volar surface now coming to coming forward axial and abaxial the two terms here we need to know is axial and abaxial it means towards the axis of the limbs and this towards the axis of the limbs means that the internal surface which, in, which is facing the opposite side of digit here an abaxial means it is away from the axis of limb which means the external surface of the digit is abaxial now directional terms continued more there are some more now if we move towards the hind limb now this in this hind limb all the terminologies are same but when we reach towards the hock joint the anterior is considered as dorsal and the posterior is considered as plantar now reaching towards the superficial and deep here superficial means close to the surface and deep means beneath the superficial is deep so here are some these are some the some of the zoomed view you can see these are some of the zoomed view okay so here are this and love animals don't hate them they are voiceless and we should love them we should not um, hate them or kill them we should always love animals so subscribe my channel like comment share if you like it if you think this is informative um, you can share this and i will try to bring more and more videos um, on the veterinary anatomy as well as on the other subjects too which are related to veterinary fields and i will try my best keep supporting that's it thank you all of you